there. How is everybody doing today? We got carried away and forgot what time it was. At least I did. Let's see if we can get a little more light on here. Well, that's a little better. So, how's everyone? Good to see you on Tuesday Talk. I'm Pastor Rick, and this is Pastor Jack. Pastor Su Jack Sullivan, that is. And uh, Ella is in the, in the room as well. She's over there. Want to say hi, Ella? Hello. Good to see you, Ella. You have something special for Thursday Talk? Right, we will. Yeah, We're working fly, on it. Just here. Bye bye. Okay, so anyway, uh, got a couple people on here: Danica, Tony, David. Uh, Save me right now, David says. Stuck on the side of the road. David, what happened that you're stuck on the side of the road? That's a difficult situation. Uh, but anyway, if you want to hit your share button, you, you may be able to pick up a few more people. My phone died, so I can't do that today. Ella, my phone did die, and I didn't get it charged. So listen, uh, Jack, why don't you say a prayer, and we'll open up today. Okay. <clears throat> thank you, Jesus, for this day. Um, thank you for dying on the cross for us, for suffering, and, um, um, for suffering and dying the most painful death. Just for us, for bearing the weight of all of our sin that we have done and will do. So thank you. Um, help us please you in life and guide us along the narrow path that you have for us. Um, please help us um, bring Christianity to other people. And let's have a great day. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Okay, so your your new van broke down. Hey, Gail Zanke, good to see you as well. David, we'll be praying for you. We'll, we'll, we'll pray for you at the end of the meeting today. But anyway, we have a special topic to talk to you about today. And that topic, Jack just mentioned it in his prayer, that we would be evangelistic, that we would recognize the importance of sharing our faith with other people, that they also would come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. I can remember in my life, uh, there were a couple of episodes in my life where looking back on it, I realized that the Lord had sent people into my life to share the Word of God with me. And so in my case, it happened, the first time it happened, well, was when I was a young person, when I was in parochial school, but not counting that. Uh, I was in college, not living a Christian life. And some students that I was in school with invited me to a Bible study in their room, in their dormitory. And I remember going there a couple of times and they were sharing their faith with me. And I, I thought it was really nice. I just wasn't ready to make that commitment, but they planted seeds in my heart. Then about a year later, someone else had the same thing happen. Someone else shared their faith with me. And, and then another time, somebody else shared their faith with me. I even accepted the Lord at one point. Uh, at least I said the sinner's prayer, but I never followed up and went to church. In fact, Jack, you know what? One time I went to a, a Christian uh, event. Mm -hmm. I was young, mm -hmm. and my friend Lenny was playing in a Christian band at the time, and after they played, they had what's called an altar call. Hey, hey, Mom, good to see you in Rye, New York. Hey, Eva, good to see you. We're talking about evangelism today. But um, anyway, so I, I, I went to this co Christian concert, and at the end of the concert, altar call? Hmm? what's an altar call? Well, what's an altar call? Good question. The altar call was when the, the, the leader of it came up to the microphone and said, is there anybody here today that wants to receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? That was a relatively new thing for me. So I raised my hand and several people did. And um, I was living in New York at the How time. Many people? Maybe a hundred people. Only four people? Four or five people. Maybe ten. I don't remember, but Maybe ten. small crowd. So, uh, so he said, okay, if you raised your hand, uh, meet me in the side room over here. So a lot of us went over there, and I filled out a card. This was in North Carolina. And I didn't think anything of it, my name, address, and phone number. So anyway, about a, a, maybe two or three weeks later, you know, I forgot about that, actually. I came back home. And, and, and anyway, I got a phone call. 
and this guy called me and he said he just wanted to check on me to see how I was doing with my new faith. And I thought, wow, I don't even know. I don't know how I'm doing. I'm not doing anything. I, but, but the point was he checked up on me. And I'll never forget that. That was important. He encouraged me to go to church somewhere. And I, I didn't know about born-again churches at that point. But I thought it was really interesting that he followed up. And I, I learned a valuable lesson. Then maybe a year later or so, um, my friend Lenny Stadler led me and, and Gigi to the Lord. So it took a few times for us to really, for me, to really hear and receive the gospel. Hearing the gospel is one thing. Mm -hmm. Receiving it is a totally different yes. story. So anyway, I have a couple of scriptures here. And then we're going to talk about different ways that we can evangelize. Because evangelism is a big part of our faith. So, Mr. Jack, uh, shall I say Pastor Jack? Um, Jack. Jack? Yeah. How about Pastor Jack? Whatever you want. <laughs> okay. Why don't you read Matthew 28, 19 and 20. <clears throat> okay. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to observe all things with that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Notice that Jesus says not only to preach and to teach, but make disciples. That's what that phone call was about that I received. He was trying to make me into a disciple, not just a believer, but a disciple. Hey, Michael Salerno, good to see you here. Talking about evangelism, Michael. So let's see, go to uh, Mark 16. Yes. Okay. 16, yeah. And you could read this one. Mark 16, verse 15. Okay. <clears throat> and he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Okay. You know, Jack, when Gigi and I first uh, came to the Lord, we moved to North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And we lived on a on a estate that had cows on it. And you know what I did? I read that scripture. I told those cows about Jesus. Well, it said every creature, so they were creatures. <laughs> okay. Now let me let's show let me show you something else. In in the God, uh, the book of Acts, chapter five, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we see another aspect of evangelism. Hey, Alinda, good to see you here. We're talking about evangelism today. So, Acts 5, verse 42. You want to read that, Jack? Okay. And daily in the temple and in every house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. So, I get the idea of teaching in the temple. But I wasn't so sure about teaching in the house. Then I realized what they were talking about was what we would call home groups or cell groups. Or having Bible studies in people's homes. Uh, we've done that in the past. We did it in New York. We did it in, when we were involved in the church in, in uh, Connecticut. Uh, we did it, no, we didn't do it in Webster. We did it in Haverhill for a while. So this is when uh, a, a church leader or someone who's trained under the authority and the, the guidance of the, of the church would open up their home to have a Bible study. There might be three or four or five, maybe, maybe even ten people that come. We had one situation here in Haverhill where a lady in our church would make a dinner for as many as 10 or 12 people. It was a big spread every week. And after we had dinner together, we had a Bible study. It was really, really good, really good. So anyway, so evangelism uh, is in the church. It's in our home. And then I, I read another scripture this morning, Jack, Acts 19. Verses 8 and 9. This is when, when Paul was in Ephesus. 8 and 9. And he went into the synagogue and spoke boldly for three months, reasoning and persuading concerning the things of the kingdom of God. But when some were hardened and did not believe, but he spoke evil of the way before the multitude, he departed from them and withdrew the disciples, reasoning daily in the school of Tyrannus. So in this case, Paul was not received in the temple and they spoke evil of him so he said okay I'm not gonna stay here and they started a school in the in the home I guess this is in the home of a person named Tyrannus so you can actually have an outreach or a ministry coming out of your home 
which is how the early church did it. And another thing, this whole idea of the mega church. What's a mega church? A mega church is when like hundreds and hundreds of people go to a church, like a big, big church yeah. building. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's one out in, in a, I think it's in Houston, that, that seats about, uh, I don't know, 20,000 people. Jeez. I mean, that's a huge church. I'm not so sure that that's what the Lord had in mind. Yeah. Although I know it happens. They, they also have small groups and different ways to break it down. So anyway. Okay. Uh, two more scriptures and we're going to talk about this. 1 Peter 3, 15. Want to read that one, Jack? Okay. <clears throat> but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. So always be ready. So that means it doesn't have to be on Sunday. It doesn't have to be in your home. It could be when you're shopping at Market Basket or, or Target or Shaw's or somewhere. Hey, there's your mom. Uh, so always be ready to give a defense of your faith. Um, I remember one Father's Day. Hey, James Carter. Oh, you're on your way back north from, uh, from Raleigh, North Carolina, leaving for Baltimore, and then back home up to, up to Haverhill. We'll be praying for you. I'm going to add that at the end, James. Good to see you. Um, oh, yeah, one Father's Day, uh, I always try to give a special gift to the fathers. I, gave, I got little, little peewee footballs about that big, and I wrote down the scripture, um, 1 Peter 3.15, and it says, always be ready to give a good defense. And I was talking about being a defensive player in football. Defend your faith and, and stand strong in that. Okay, one more passage. And then we're going to talk about it. So 2 Corinthians 5, 17 to 20. You want to give it a shot? <laughs> there. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God, who has re reconcil reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, that God was in Christ reconcil re reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf be re reconciled to God. Okay, so we are now ambassadors for Christ. So if we're in Christ, we're a new creation, all mm -hmm. things are new, and in that new position that we're in, we're called to be an ambassador or a missionary, you could say. Uh, and to have a ministry of reconciliation. So that means God wants to use his church to help reconcile other people back to God. That's what Lenny did with me. Lenny, Lenny reconciled me to the Lord. He brought me in a place where he could talk to me and pray for me and help me to get made right with God. And that, that's what the Lord has called all of us to do. So I'm just going to write this down so I don't forget. For James... And for Dave, special prayer. Okay, so this brings us to a little discussion we want to have today. So the topic is evangelism. Jesus, And when Jesus said those words to go into all the world, etc., it was right before he ascended back to heaven. So he had died on the cross. He rose from the grave. He was on the earth for 40 days. On the 40th day, he went back to be with the Father. But right before he left... He said, go into all the world and preach. He also said, don't go just yet, but wait until you're, you receive the Holy Spirit. You'll have power to be a witness for me when you receive the Holy Spirit. And we see that in Acts chapter 1, verse 8. And then in Acts chapter 2 is when the Holy Spirit actually came and they were filled and they had boldness and they spoke. And that day, uh, 3,000 people came to know the Lord. So anyway, having said all that, I just want to have a little talk for the next 15 minutes. And Jack, I know you're, you thought about it. But what can we do 
What can you and I do? What can we do, Jack, to be evangelistic people? Evangelistic means uh, an evangel is someone that proclaims the good news. That's, that's why we say evangelize. We share the good news. We share the gospel. But what can we do? And we are an evangelical church, uh, so that we emphasize this this great commission that is called to go into all the. Now we we do support missionaries. Our church does. I think we have thirty five. We have missionaries in our country. We have missionaries in Latin America. Um, I don't think we have. Oh, we have one in South America. We have missionaries in Europe, Africa. Uh, Middle East, China, Japan. Um, I don't know that we have anyone in the Philippines or out, out that way. But we have a lot of missionaries. So we support. And what I mean by support, we give money to them. They need money to live, to buy things. So every month we give all these missionaries $50 a month. And so for the course of a year, we're giving away probably $20,000, $22,000 to support all these missionaries. But that's one thing. I'm thinking about what can we do locally. Now locally, mm -hmm. we do support some, some missions work here in Haverhill. Let me name them if I can. We support Common Ground and we support Somebody Cares New England, which are two ministries that help poor people, giving food, giving shelter, giving counsel, and that sort of thing. We support Pregnancy Care Center, which helps uh, people that are pregnant to have their baby and to provide for their baby. Uh, we support Leaving the Streets Ministry, which is a, a ministry that, that was created to reach out to the gangs of Haverhill and the poor people of Haverhill. So we're, we're doing a lot with that. We also support Teen Challenge, which is in Brockton, Mass. Uh, we also support New Life Home for Women, which is in Manchester, New Hampshire. And then, let's see, what else do we support here in the States? I think we support, uh, oh yeah, we support a ministry in India, but they're headquartered in uh, Springfield, Missouri, uh, called, I think it's called Project Hope or Project Rescue. They work with uh, women that have been involved with human trafficking. We also support a ministry here in Massachusetts for women caught up in human trafficking. And then you have, so that, that's, that's our area. And then we go into the other countries, uh, the more, like, more, more developed countries that we're involved with. But anyway, locally, I'm, Jack, here's the thing. I'm concerned about the people that live over there behind us and the people that live across the street and the people that live over there and over there. Your little buddies that I see over here playing basketball. I saw them last night playing basketball. I, I'm concerned about these little guys. I invited them to church. They, they, they never, never come. But I'm thinking, what can we do? And what could some of you do that are watching this today? What can we do? First of all, do we all recognize that it's important to do something? You know, that's the first thing. Be aware of what Jesus said and what the early church did. That's why I read those scriptures. But anyway, Jack, what do you think? Do you have anything you could add to this conversation? What would you like to do, or what do you think we could do, maybe, to reach the community? So, well, it's, you know, it's easy to talk to other Christians, you know, and be around other Christians in yeah. church and in event, Christian events. You have to go into the world to find other people, because other people who really need the gospel. To, yes. They are not going to be within the Christian <laughs> ring. That's right. So you have to go out into the world and don't stay in the Christian bubble. Well, that reminds me. When my friend Lenny told me and Gigi about Jesus, you know where we were? Where? In his trailer. In North Carolina. Well, we were friends, and he invited, he invited us over for ice cream, and then we had, later we had dinner. And after we had all that, he, he said, I just want to talk to you about the Bible and about Jesus. I said, yeah. We talked for, but anyway, we talked, we weren't in church is what I'm saying. We weren't in church. So he met me right where I was. And that, that's what you're saying. So 
Christians have to be aware of the need. So let, let, let's talk about this. Pastor Jack, what can your mommy say? Um, so let's say we're at Market Basket. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had an experience at Market Basket, you or your mom or anybody that you know of? Well, I've been to Market Basket, but not a very important experience there. <laughs> what about, was there ever an opportunity for someone to share their faith? Um, not that I was there, no. I think your, your mom tells a story once that she was, I think, at Target. Mm -hmm. And somebody was getting ready to have a baby or something. Or, and there's another, and, and your mom prayed for her. And there's another situation where your, your mom, I think, was impressed to, to give a word to somebody in one of those stores, like out of the blue. So that, that's a good thing. Like, like to be, I guess what we're saying is... T we have to take our faith out of the church because everyone in the church basically is already a Christian. Well, not everyone, but basically everyone. But the idea is when we go to work or we go shopping or we go to school, we take our faith with us and we look for an opportunity to minister to someone. Look, your mommy said, I almost delivered the baby. And yep, that happens, listening to the Holy Spirit. I think I've had a situation like that too where the Lord just impressed on me to go up and say something to somebody or just to kind of interact with somebody that, you know, maybe I could discern they were looking a little bit, you know, sad or upset or, you know, just, just to say something. You know, Jesus said that you are the light of the world and you're the salt of the earth. So let your lights shine before men that they would see your good works and glorify your Father. So, Stacy, your mommy's right to listen to the Holy Spirit because he may give us opportunities uh, to minister to people. Okay, let me, let me share one, can I? So what would you call that one, that first one that you said? Oh, look, look beyond the church, right? Go into the world. Okay, one thing that we've done at the church, and I want to, I want to do the mathematics here. We, we would have Hillstock. We had Hillstock for 11 years. Hillstock is a th actually um, a Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, a four-day outreach to the community. Saturday was the big day. And Saturday we would have, let's say, an average of maybe 800 people. So you have 800 people, and you, we did it for 11 years. Is that right? Um, 800 times 11. Okay, so 0 times 1 is 0. zero times and then 800 here, right? 8 times 1 is 10. Is that right? 80,000 people? I don't know. Someone multiply 800 by 11. I think that's 80,000 people. That, that sounds like a lot of people. Some of them were repeats. But, but the point is, We've gone out and we, pro and we would go out and literally proclaim the Word of God. We would say it in English, we would say it in Spanish, um, we would say it through music, we would say it through drama, we would say it when we gave out free hot dogs, we'd give out 2,000 hot dogs every year. Is that right? I think... Uh... 80,000? 880,000? 80,800. 80, that sounds more reasonable. Well, 80,000 people. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I'm just saying that's a, that's a great way to do that. So you reach the masses of people. But I found out that although that's good and that's necessary, I hope to do it again sometime. Uh, COVID kind of shut us down. But... Um, I don't know how many of those people actually made their way to church. They may have come for the free food. We would give away bicycles and footballs and hula hoops and everything else, beach, uh, beach balls. But anyway, they heard the gospel. At least they heard the gospel. So that's another way to be evangelistic. You got another one? Yes. You have to, like, if people still don't believe, you have to share your testimony. 
That's a good one. Yes. We had someone share their testimony at church on Sunday. I think, were the kids still there? I think they were. Well, the testimony was that this couple went away on vacation and, and the man had a stroke and the woman ended up in the hospital with some internal problems. But uh, the testimony was that God got them the help that they needed and and they're both perfectly fine now. So that was a testimony. Mm -hmm. another, another testimony might be how you came to know the Lord. Like Jack, you know, I think your testimony was really good when you shared last week that you knew about God and everything but you weren't ready to get baptized yet. You wanted to wait until you like, got it in your heart. Is that right? Yeah. Accept Jesus and baptize. So you, yeah, so you knew about Jesus mm -hmm. and then later you accepted Jesus. Yes. So it took a little while, right? Yeah. Okay. So does everyone have a testimony? Paul said, I've become all things to all men that Perhaps I may win some to the Lord. He said, to the Jew, I became a Jew. To the Gentile, I became a Gentile. To those under the law, I became like that. I always say, like, um, what's the word I'm trying to say? Huh? Well, uh, there's a word. Theoretically, I have three or four testimonies in my back pocket. You know what that means? Testimonies that, you <laughs> that I could use. They're not literally in my back pocket, but I say that. Yeah. In other words, if I meet a person who was down, down and out, I could kind of share a little bit about that. If I meet someone that's in college and they're doing good, but they're just kind of lost, I could share about that. If I meet someone that loves sports, mm -hmm. I could talk from that angle, you know. If I know, if I meet someone that's into music, I got a music testimony, you know, I got all these different, different aspects of our lives that we could draw from to minister to the need at the moment. So again, I think Stacy said it earlier, you have to listen, listen to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times when you're meeting with people or you kind of meet people like, um, we call them divine appointments, like out of the blue. Sometimes it's so important not to even say a whole lot, but just to listen to what's going on with them. And then at the appropriate time, give a little word based on our experiences. Yeah, you have to be bold about talking to other people. You don't you have to be, be shy. Yeah, right, you have to be bold. Because even though that you're not talking to Christians, they may be your friends, they may be strangers, but you have to be bold. You're right. Talking to them. Don't be shy about talking about Christ. Right. Hmm. All right, let me give you another thing here. How to be evangelistic. Mm -hmm. I like to change our sign out front with catchy little sayings. Mm -hmm. Someone told me that there's probably, I think, I think this is right, maybe 20,000 cars go by our church every day. It's a lot of cars. And we have a great sign right out front and so every two weeks or so, I change. in fact, I have to change it pretty soon. We put a saying or a scripture out there. And many times when I meet people, they say, oh, that, you're the, you have the church with the sign out front. I always like reading those things that you put out there. So right now, what, says, what the sign says is, isn't it about time we got back to church? Question mark. Jesus is waiting that's been my, my theme for the last couple of weeks. And uh, I'm not sure that anyone came to church because of that. I mean, we have had some visitors. I didn't ask them if that was why, but at least people see it and they're thinking about it, hopefully, especially when they get the red light right in front of the church. They have not, not, nothing else to look at but that sign. So I want to make sure it's a, it's a good saying or scripture or some type of phrase that gets people's attention. Okay, what else you got, Jack? You got anything? Yeah. Oh, it's 1230. Let's just do one more. Okay. Um, let's see which one. Is that, is that? I think that. Okay. You have to pray for other people. That's right. You know what the scripture says? Unless the Lord builds the house, those that labor, labor in vain. 
So we could do all these creative things. We, we try to be creative, have special activities at the church, etc. different guests come in, whatever. We're having Teen Challenge in July. But unless the Lord does the work, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. So we need to be a praying people that will pray for God to move uh, through our fellowship, through our lives. And um, yeah. certainly the Lord wants to do that. He's just looking for a willing vessel to do that. So that was very good, Jeff. All right. Well, we're going to have to close out here, everybody. Um, we'll put some music on in a minute. But we do want to pray for James for his ride back home and for David Newfell for his van. So let's go to the Lord, okay? okay. I'm going to pray for this, and you can pray us out, okay, okay, Jeff? Let's pray, everybody. Dear Father, we pray for James Carter and Danica Carter, Lord, as they make their way back to Haverhill. Uh, they're headed right now towards, towards Baltimore and then up to, up, to, um, up to Haverhill. Lord, it's a long ride. Let their vehicle be safe. Let the traffic be moving. Let there be no accidents, no trouble on the road whatsoever. Let the other uh, drivers around them be safe and alert. And uh, let, let uh, James and Danica be alert as well. Bless them, take care of them. Give them traveling mercies as they make their way home. Lord, also we want to lift up uh, David Newfell today. Lord, uh, the van situation seems to be a, a problem. Uh, we just pray for him, Lord, that you would provide. Lord, we believe that you provided him with that vehicle. It's running, it's registered, it's, it's legit. And now we hear he's on the side of the road somewhere. We, Lord, we just call upon your name to give him the wisdom and the provisions he needs to get that vehicle running properly and safely and let him continue to do really great in the school that he's going to down in Connecticut. So Lord, bless David and take care of him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. Amen, everyone. Well, thank you for joining us. And uh, we'll see you next time. You want to say anything else, Jack? Uh-huh. Well, do the intro video. Okay. Uh, want to say anything else? Um. But I always say, God always has a plan for you, so you have to trust Him. God always has a plan for you, and you've got to trust Him. All right, God bless you. Thanks for joining us. Bye.